Uh, so today we're making a Vivac test socket using our Coyote lanyard puck and the Coyote test socket connector. So our first socket here out of Vivac, we're describing how we want to put on our puck and get everything ready. In the Vivac, you can use a, a vacuum nylon if you wish, or just leave it raw, your preference. You do get better vacuum draw with a vacuum nylon on it. As you can see, the end of our cast is already prepped and ready for the puck. We flattened it down a little bit so the puck sits on there real nice. And on this cast, because it was wet, you want to take some acetate and coat the top of that cast so you make sure your urethane sticks to it real well. It doesn't like to stick to wet plaster very good. So once I've done that, I set up my puck and get my orientation for my exit hole. And on this cast, it's going to be straight anterior. So I like to draw around the top of the socket and mark where my puck sets. And then I go ahead and mark on the face of my puck my exit hole so I can make sure that when I spin that thing around with the urethane on it and my glue, it lines back up to where I want it to be. When you go to seal your puck on the top there, you don't have much surface bond area. So put a fair amount close to the outside edge of your puck. This allows you to get better adhesion so it doesn't snap off when you're pulling your plastic. All right, so we'll take our coyote quick. We'll run us a nice little bead right around the edge and then set this on top of our cast. So once we set it up there, move it a little bit, get our lines all matched up, and then any excess that comes out from under the puck you want to get rid of. And if you get enough coyote quick on there, you will get a good bond and it should stay still through the rest of the process of plastic pulling. All right, we'll go ahead and cook our plastic and let this set up just for a minute. And now we're ready to pull. So the one thing we want to watch when we're pulling a plastic over the top of something in a blister form is make sure we get good draw around our distal end. So once I hit vacuum here, the next thing I'll do is help coax that Vivac in around the base of the lanyard puck. So you can see we've hit vacuum. Everything's drawn down nice, but we need to help this up here on the distal end just a little bit. So I'll take a vacuum nylon and coax it in. And what you don't want to do is wrap it around it super tight like that and strangulate it. You just want to help coax it and keep coaxing it in nice and easy. You don't want to thin out that plastic too much. So we'll help out the base, and then we'll look at where our exit hole tooling is, where our strap's going to go through, and make sure that that has a nice little seal to it. Makes a good model. Then we'll go ahead and double check our notches that are cut in the puck to make sure that the plastic is drawn into it real well. This will lock it into your socket. You won't have any trouble with it spinning or moving. There, now we've got a nice seal. We'll let this cool off. We'll sand it and cut it out and get it ready for the next step, which is gluing on our Coyote test socket connector. Cut out your socket in your usual manner. Now you can see where our Coyote Quick is inside here and how it bonded to the cast, but it doesn't completely stick to our plastic. There's your nice little ring of glue right there. So by keeping that ex excess wiped away from the edge, it allows that plastic to draw in really nice. And to even get a more conforming fit, a vacuum nylon in this application does work very well. It just helps it draw faster. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to sand open my tooling piece for the where the strap exits out. And I'm going to rough the bottom of the socket up where I'm going to glue it to my test socket connector. We want to make sure that we rough these surfaces up so they bond really well. And all we're trying to do is score this plastic. We're not thinning it out. Now when sanding open your tooling piece, make sure you expose all of the tooling piece. It makes it much easier to come out. If you leave any plastic hooked around the face of that blue tooling piece, you'll have a really tough time getting it out of that socket. But if it's completely exposed, once you put the screw in it, you can pull that out fairly easily. Do a little prep work here and clean up the rest of our socket so it's not all sharp. Okay, now we've got our tooling piece exposed. Let's take our screw and run it into our little hole here. Get a hold of it with some vice grips, hang on to it, pull that turkey out. If you need to, set it in a vise and hit, take your hand and hit on your socket to help knock it out. Sometimes they bond in kind of tight. So in this depth that we have, it's exposed on the face of it, can always be shortened up if you need to. There's no reason to cut that back from the very beginning and keep it short. So now we've got our exit hole. We're ready to take our lanyard and run it through, and we'll find out where our spot goes for our chafe. 
But before we do that, let's get our test socket suction connector glued on. On this suction connector, you want to make sure that you rough this up thoroughly so it makes a good bond to your Vivac. I've taken this over to the Troutman on my roughest wheel and run it on slow and really scored the face of this plastic. Then I've got a piece of 24 grit here that I've run across the top of it to scratch it up even more. It's not just a matter of dulling it, it's actually getting good scratches in it. Then I like to take a utility knife with a sharp blade and score it even more. These deep scratches help the urethanes get inside there and really make a good bond. The last thing you want is for this thing to break off when a patient's standing on it. Don't be afraid of over prepping this part. And you can really see how that's scored. So once I've prepped both pieces, now I just want to tag it on with my Coyote Quick. So I'm going to go ahead and look at my alignment holes where my pyramid or rotable is going to go on the end. I'm going to use this as a reference point for my anterior and I'm going to use my exit hole for my lanyard and try to line it up and give it some kind of a rotational alignment to start with. Now when you glue this on you can get some outset or extension flexion or possibly varus valgus to your socket. I would recommend not getting too carried away with this though since this is a chemical bond not a mechanical bond you're relying on a glued surface to keep everything connected we're just going to do a bench alignment here all we were asked for was some slight posterior offset so I'll start looking at this on my bench and determining where I want to glue this and where to position it so I'll get my glue ready next put it on my puck and then I'll set my socket down on top of it all I'm looking to do here is just tag it on. I got a little carried away with my glue at this step. This is a little bit excessive, but I want to make sure I have a good solid bond on the bottom. So if you get too much on, it's not a big deal. All right, we'll set this up, just bench aligning it. And I've got a little bit of overage on my puck, more than what I want to see. I'm just going to go ahead and wipe that off because I don't want that much hanging or bridging over the face of that puck yet. It's primarily the idea here is just to tag it on. We'll go around after it's set up and fill in any gapping that we may want to take care of so we get a better, stronger bond. All right, let's let that set for a minute or two so we don't move around our alignment. Grab up a new mix tip and get ready to shoot this edge. So what I'm looking at here is any voiding that may be around it. And what I want to do is run a bridge between my puck and the Vivac, my, my test socket connector and I want to make a nice connection up onto that Vivac so it makes a really good bond. And then my cutout notches, I want to run just a little bit over the edge to help that make a hook. So all I'm doing here is filling it in just like we talked about and I'm coming up onto the Vivac a little ways and making sure I'm hitting the top edge of that test socket connector. It's just a little bit of reassurance here to make sure I've got a good solid bond to this socket. Where it's offset, I'm just filling in the void but I am coming up onto the plastic and really making that lock in. And here's our little cutout notch. I'll run a little bit down into it. Makes a little more of a hook. So that'll bond really nice. So after I've completed this step, once it goes into the practitioner and they want to stand a patient on it, one other thing I would recommend doing is taking your fiberglass casting tape and wrapping around the base of the socket, covering the test socket connector. That's what that groove is all the way around there for, is so it helps lock that casting tape in. You can make a safer walking socket out of it if you wrap it with casting tape. The gluing method we've done here is adequate, but it's only meant for in-house use, not to leave your office, just for standing and doing light walk testing. If you want to do more aggressive and get more stepping, and, and if you want to do more extended testing, then you definitely want to wrap this with the fiberglass casting tape. And that groove you can, allows you to lock it right into that groove and then come up onto your socket covering the lanyard puck and then being just on the base of the socket and that'll give you a real solid strong bond. And the only thing you have to do once you wrap that with your casting tape is come back to your opening and make sure you just cut or sand that opening back out so your lanyard will go through it. Now all we have left to do is take it over to the Troutman and smooth up our exit hole where our strap goes through and smooth up our proximal brim and we're almost finished. So now that we've got it smoothed up let's go ahead and put our chafe on 
We've already determined our location for our chafe by running the lanyard straps through. And now we're ready to send it on so we can do a trial fit with a patient. So here's our liner we have set up with our socket. And it's hooked on with a kit that we sell at Coyote Design. This is our lanyard strap connection for the base of your liner. You can see it right here. It's very minimal in size, very sleek in design. And we'll just run our strap through and do a double check, make sure everything's nice and straight. It's exiting through our hole properly. It fits in there real well. It's not bulky at all with our strap connection componentry. And there we go. We're ready to send this on so a patient can test fit it.